All right, let's check out your chapter two homework. Um, this is problem number one. And in problem number one, you're gonna be looking at a frequency table. And in this problem, they give you the categories. Um, it's winter, spring, summer, fall. Notice they list these right here. They simply list the frequencies and then they convert these into a uh, relative frequency. And if you're still kind of wondering how do you do that, all you do is you just divide. So for example, you take 100, if you add up this total frequency column, that would equal 1,000. And so to get the relative frequency for the for winter, it's just gonna be 100, divide that by 1,000 for the spring and so forth, it's 300, divide that by 1,000. And that's where they're gonna get those decimal numbers. They call those relative frequencies. And then one thing they didn't show here, um, I always usually like to emphasize this, is when you add these up, you should add, they should add up uh, to one. All right. So that's uh, essentially the first one. That's a pretty easy one. Again, this is called a uh, frequency table or relative frequency table. Let's check, check out problem two. It's gonna be the same thing. And on this one, it says we've got replacement covers for cell phones in five different colors. So again, they list all these different colors and they wanna estimate demand for each color using this as you're gonna set this up like a table. And so, Again, they call this a frequency table. And of course you can draw, you don't, I mean, you can draw a bar chart or a pie chart if you want to, you don't have to enter in here, but the first one is a frequency. And then if they're gonna make a million cell phone covers, they want you to predict of each color, how much they want you to produce. So what you're gonna have to do in this one is you're gonna have to set up, just like the previous problem, create a frequency uh, distribution with the relative frequency. So if this first column is your frequency, if you add these up, you would get, I believe it's 1300, and then you would convert these into a relative frequency. Remember, you just take 130, divide by 1300 and so forth. So you get your relatives. And then whatever you get there, then you're just gonna multiply that by a million. And then that would be your predictions when you get down uh, to last part. And you gotta do that for each of these colors. So let me scroll down and just kind of show you uh, what they came up with and hopefully you can when you do your calculations you can come up with these same numbers and remember when you add up these numbers again those should add up to a million so let me just kind of make a note there when you get that done just to kind of remind you when you add up all those all your estimates that should add up to one million and i believe that's it and of course down at the bottom they just kind of make a couple comments in terms of using that relative uh frequency right here to multiply by each color to get these estimates. All right, that is the second one. Let's check out the third one. And on this one, they want you to, to do an estimate of how many classes. And as you review the PowerPoint, remember the formula, it is uh, two to the power of K is greater than the number of observations. So. If there's 38 observations, whatever to the K power we get, that's gonna give you one more than 38, that's gonna be the number of classes. So if two to the five is 32, two to the six would give you 64, that's one more, that's one more than two to the five power. So you'd use six as your estimate for the number of classes. Now again, I know this is very subjective, but they're wanting you to plug in uh, six on that one. All right, next one. On this one, they want you to calculate uh, the interval. And so of course, we know the difference between these two, but you have to divide by the number of classes. So you still have to get the number of classes, which is two to the K. So if you go two to the seven, which is 128, remember there's 230 observations. So two to the eight takes you to 256. So that next power takes you more than 230. So you'd use eight in your denominator. So you'd be using eight classes. You take the difference there, divide by eight, you'd use about 41.5 uh, in each class. So that would be your class interval. All right, that's four. And again, we're gonna be practicing more of this. So same thing, uh, number five, uh, we've got 53 observations that give you the min and max. And of course, how many classes? Same thing, your two to the K uh, uh, formula. So if two to the five is 32, we know that two to the six will give you 64, that's more than 53. So we'd use six classes. And then of course the lower limit, uh, you know, obviously if you look at your intervals down here, they show you how to get your intervals. 
but generally speaking, you probably want to go with about 40. That would be kind of a nice rounded number, more convenient. So I would suggest using 40 as your best number. So again, no, it's more subjective, but that's essentially probably what you do if you're going to create this. All right, that's five. On this one, again, <clears throat> practicing more, they give you the Excel data file. Uh, they want you to put this into a frequency distribution, which we'll look at in a minute. But down below, again, they want you to know how many classes would you recommend? And again, I'll show you the form of the calculation again, two to the K power, two to the four, 16, then two to the five, you typically use five because it looks like uh, the number of observations is, was it do, 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 16 days, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, four, so 16. So yeah, so five, you'd su suggest five classes. And of course, down below, uh, you can set up your intervals. And so typically if you take, uh, what's it, find the high and the low, down here they're showing you the interval calculation from your data. They're divide by, the, by your number of classes, 1.2. They're suggesting just use 1.5, that's what I would do. And so starting with 24, you go up 1.5, and then from 25.5 to 27, 27 to 28.5 and so forth. So here's your classes set up. And of course, this column, you just have to count. This is your frequencies. And then of course, that's 16. And then to get the relative frequency, it's just gonna be two divided by 16, four divided by 16, eight over 16, and two over 16. They took these out three decimals so that you can notice in this one, they do show that it does add up uh, to one. All right, that's six. Again, more problems on this one. On this one, uh, they notice they tell you to use a class interval of three starting with zero. So they set this up for you. You just simply have to count. So here's your numbers. You have to kind of go through these and just organize it and count it up. There's 51 observations. And it looks like it, they're talking about where do most of the numbers tend to cluster. It looks like it's three to six. That's just 21 hits there. And then they want you to convert these to a relative frequency. And hopefully you remember what to do. You just take nine divided by 51, 21 over 51 and so forth. And then down below, you can see these are the percentages they came up with on this one. It looks like they took it out to two decimal places and then notice they show that it equals 100%. And I think that's all we really need on that one. All right, so that is problem seven. Let's check out number eight. We've got three more. So right here, we're looking at a histogram. And you'll notice we've got zero to five. Here's your interval categories. Uh, they asked a question about total number of packages shipped. You just have to add up five plus 13 plus 28 plus 23 plus 18 plus 10 plus three. That would give you 100. And then, of course, the class, uh, they want to know the, uh, bu 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 the class interval. So in that case, that's pretty easy. You know, zero to five, five to 10. We know the interval is five. It says what number of packages shipped in the 10 to 15. And that's simply right here. 10 to 15 looks like it's 28. And then let's see, uh, if you wanna convert that to relative frequency, of course, you just divide that by 100. So that's where they got the 0.28. And then they want the midpoint. Uh, you just take 10 plus 15 divided by two, it's 12.5. And then down below, they're showing you the calculations. If you want to see the actual calculations, what I just essentially told you. All right. So this is number eight. Let's check out number nine. We're looking at another frequency table. You're just kind of ask, you know, answering some questions. So in the first one, it looks like number of employees. It says 50. You add these up. That's your that's your uh, employees you're studying. Uh, the midpoint is just, in this case, uh, the first class, zero to three. Zero plus three is three, divided by two is 1.5. And then let's see, the other part, they just want you to plug in some coordinates. This is for the first class. So the coordinates will always be, if you were gonna record this as your midpoint, would be X is equal to 1.5. And then whatever your frequency is, is gonna be what Y is equal to. So if you go back up, you can see in that first class that five, whoops, five was your number of employees. That was your hits for that category. And I believe that's it on number nine. Last one. 
number 10. Let me erase that. Very similar to the previous one. Uh, you just have to answer the number of people, a number of orders, that's 40. The midpoint in this case, you just five divided by two is 2.5. And then of course, 2.5 will be your coordinates answer on uh, number part C and then Y is equal to six. Notice that's the frequency count for zero to five. Got it. All right, guys, I believe that's it on chapter two homework.